Michael Keogh here, and uh, hey Keogh, what are you up to? Well, everybody knows with everything that's going on with COVID, and uh, it, it's just, it's crazy, crazy times. And they talked about deferring mortgage payments. Um, what about people that rent? What about people that own properties? What are they able to do? So what we've done is we've, we've reached out to someone that knows all about this stuff, and uh, we're going to be talking today with uh, Larry Palmgren. So hey Larry, how are you? I'm well, thanks Michael. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. So let me tell you a little bit about Larry. So Larry operates LJP Legal Services here in Barrie. And uh, Larry worked in the um, debt industry from 1992 until 2012. And then he, when he was licensed as a paralegal by the Law Society of Ontario, which used to be the Law Society of Upper Canada. A little bit of history there for you. Um, since then, his practice is focused mainly or primarily on landlord and tenant and small claims law. So that's pretty much exactly where we want to be today to talk about those things. And as such, Larry's represented landlords and tenants uh, in more than 100 cases in Ontario. So someone that's very um, capable of answering a bunch of the questions that we have here today. So welcome, Larry, and thank you for participating in this, our very first video uh, uh, Zoom meeting. So. Cool. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction and you're welcome. Um, so just, if you want to just give us a bit of a summary, Larry, on, on what you see so far a little bit, and then we can get into uh, a few more questions after that, or would you like me to start with some questions? Well, sure. I'll give you a, a basic sense of, of the landscape in the landlord tenant world in Ontario right now, specifically as it relates to the COVID-19 crisis that we're currently facing. Um, there are, hundreds of thousands or millions of tenants and landlords in Ontario. Um, a lot of the people that live in uh, apartment buildings rent from a larger corporation. A lot of people who live in houses or condominiums are renting from a landlord who owns one or maybe two units that they rent out. The challenge faced right now is the big corporations are hopefully, and I do hope they are, safe and sound with some cash reserves, the tenants and smaller landlords are facing real crises because of job loss, because of challenges paying rent, because of uh, challenges paying utilities and property taxes um, as a result of, of the current crisis. Wow, so we own a property ourselves and, and you know, this is the or April 2nd, so um, we were fortunate that our tenants paid their full rent. So. What happens in a situation where someone has lost their job, as an example, and are not able to pay their rent? What are some of the options that they can that, that, that they have? So if, if, if someone is a tenant and they're having difficulty paying rent, um, the best thing that I always recommend to tenants is have you spoken with your landlord. And the same thing holds true for both sides. If there's a way to work through this, that's not going to be horribly prejudicial to uh, to a landlord and then a, a tenant can handle if the tenants are otherwise good tenants then try and work with them and from a tenant's perspective if you're comfortable with your landlord and you want to keep living there get in touch with them if you're having trouble finding a way to pay rent the other thing i would recommend is in every community in ontario you can dial 211 the same as you would dial 411 for information or 911 for an emergency if you dial 211 It'll, you'll get on the phone with somebody who will enable you to access local resources, either um, uh, municipal or regional resources that may be able to help you through this crisis and provide some level of, of, of um, funding to pay rent in the short term. So, you know, April, th th this happened, you know, March 17th was a state of emergency. And then I think it was the 23rd um, was the next latest announcement. So. Going forward, obviously, probably the best thing to do is if you're, you know, if you were able to make your April payment and not able to make your May payment, start that conversation with your landlord now instead of at the end of the month, right? So and I think what happens is people maybe feel a little bit afraid to talk to them, right? Because what happens? So there are going to be situations where that landlord is expecting or, or hoping on that amount of money to pay their mortgage. Do you know of anything that's available for them? in order to, like, has the government put anything down for them in a rental property? For a landlord? Yes. Per se, no. Okay. Um, the A lot of the banks are um, providing some level of deferment or relief from mortgage payments in the short term, but that only will apply, as far as I've heard, 
that will only apply to the the mortgage mortgagor's primary residence. Okay. So if you if you own a rental property, then the expectation is that you pay the mortgage on that rental property. Now, in terms of um, the landlord tenant board, the regular um, uh, enforcement methods of the landlord tenant board are still in place, but on hold, so to speak. So if someone misses a rent payment and you're a landlord, then you issue a form that's called an N4 through the landlord tenant board. And you, you give that to your tenant and say, look, you've got to pay rent or leave, essentially. Now, um, as it says on the form, uh, and let me, sorry, I meant to do this at the outset of the conversation, Michael. I want to make sure the people that are listening to this or watching this are aware that what I'm saying now cannot be construed as, as uh, legal advice. If you want legal advice, call me. And on a case-by-case -case basis, absolutely. Call, call a competent attorney or, or uh, licensed paralegal and they'll be able to walk you through this. Um, but as I was saying, the, um, uh, the options for relief for landlords that have one or maybe two units, the smaller landlords, like, like yourself, Michael, they're not in a good place right now so if they need to if they need to give their tenant an n4 that says basically pay or find a different place to live by all means do so i would also explain to the landlord do your very best to work with your tenants give them the n4 i mean that's just that's just good thinking but when you give them the n4 temper it with either a, a letter or a telephone call or a conversation at six feet apart of course that um that outlines we don't want you to leave. We like you as a tenant, but we do need to find a way to get the rent paid because without the rent being paid, then you can't hold up your mortgage. The property will be taken away from you and sold to the highest bidder. Yeah. So uh, the challenge this face is faced not by the bigger corporations who, again, I, I hope they're, they're fine and I hope they've got sufficient cash, or cash reserves, but the challenge is faced by um, the small landlord that has one or two units and by the tenants who don't have a concerted provincial or national method of, of looking for rent relief. Um, one of the suggestions that, that, you know, when we bought our property in, in cases, what happens, people take the equity from their house and use that to buy their other property through a line of credit or whatever. So um, one of the options is if, if uh, you're not getting the amount of rent that, that covers the mortgage payment, you can always dip into that line of credit a little bit if that's available to help offset that. So that's another option for people that do have some rental properties if you're in a position that 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 uh, that you're able to do that. Um, so what happens if I'm able to pay my rent, uh, Larry, and I just say, out of heck with it, I'm not going to pay? Well, there are, and it's unfortunate, but there are, um, as, as there are bad landlords, there are bad tenants. There are people who, as a way of life, just don't pay their rent when they're supposed to, not because they can't, just because they don't feel like it. And unfortunately, they're going to have to pay the rent. Now, the Landlord Tenant Board has stayed, um, or put a hold on at least for the short term, all evictions. So um, if somebody was ordered to pay rent, um, then they still have to pay that rent. And if they don't pay that rent, they could be forced to because an order by the Landlord Tenant Board is enforced by the sheriff the same way as a, a small claims judgment is. Um, if somebody is to have been evicted and that eviction is put on hold because the landlord tenant board has put a hold on evictions, then every day the per diem ordered by the landlord tenant board is payable. So if the hold is in place for two months, there's going to be 61, 62 extra days of rent on top of the order that, that, uh, that you saw when you when you lost the case, the landlord tenant board. So I would never ever recommend to a tenant not to pay the rent regardless of the circumstances. It's not fair to the tenants themselves in the long term, and it's certainly not fair to the landlords. Um, are you aware of anything with respect, so if you have a property where the tenant is paying the heat and hydro, what happens if they get behind on that? Like, does that, how does that affect me as a landlord? Um, is there any, any way that I can make sure that those payments are being made? Yes, you certainly can. Uh, for the most part, depending on the type of, of unit it is, for instance, if it's a house with two tenants in it, you may not have the uh, utilities in their name, but if the utilities are in their name, ultimately, if you're the property owner, you can access the payment records. And if there's, a, if there's an arrears, that will come back to you to haunt you. Yes, for sure. 
Um, so if I make an arrangement with my tenant because they can't pay, and then they don't keep up with that end of their bar of the bargain, are there any consequences or like what can I do after that? If they say they're going to do something and then they don't. Well, you can almost treat it as, as a normal day-to-day -day business with regard to landlord-tenant law and the Residential Tenancies Act. If someone says they're going to do something, you agree to it, by all means, get it in writing. Um, and then once you have it in writing and they don't abide by it, then that just becomes a piece of evidence when, when, you, uh, when you give them an N4 and then file an L1 application. An L1 is an application before the Landlord-Tenant Board to um, force the uh, termination of tenancy and to collect arrears. So it's kind of, it, it's interesting, like you're saying, because all of the big corporations really probably don't have to worry. Well, they do have to worry, but they have the ability to take and cover some payments here and there. But the mom and pop run sort of trying to get, you know, ahead a little bit seems to be the ones that are going to maybe be, end up being behind the eight ball when this all comes together. So um, any scenarios that you can think of that um, maybe we haven't discussed that, um, you know, with, with, if someone was, so even if someone had an eviction order already in place for say April 15th, we can't, they can't be evicted because of no, like is it any new eviction notice or any evictions at all? Any evictions at all. Um, okay. If they've been scheduled, they're no longer scheduled. Um, and I, and I, I get that. I mean, the, the government doesn't want to see anybody out on the street. Um, if, if, and of course, when somebody has been evicted, a lot of times they'll have, um, uh, they'll have the ability up until the moment of eviction to redeem themselves and pay the back rent and, and go on as before. Um, as it is right now with the, with the, the order to, to stop all evictions and stop all proceedings, then even if someone, if, if someone got an eviction uh, date from the sheriff, uh, the day before the um, uh, the order was put down by the landlord tenant board, that eviction is on hold until such time as as the landlord tenant board resumes normal business. You still have an eviction order. You still have the ability to enforce it when the board and the sheriff are able to enforce it. And the money that is outlined in the order that is owed to you is still owed to you, plus the per diem for the extra time when the people are living there right now. So, so there, there is, because the landlord is, or the landlord is not able to evict somebody right this minute, is not licensed to live somewhere for free. The, uh, the rent will have to be paid. Well, and it's interesting because we've had a few properties with clients that, that we've sold where the tenant, you know, hasn't paid. So you end up, it's one or two months before you get them out. And now this is just going to be compounded on top of that for anyone that's in that situation, which, um, is unfortunate for those that are, you know, just trying to, you know, get ahead a little bit in real estate. So, um, Very cool. is it possible to use the last month's rent as this month? Like, is that, is that an option? No, it's not. Okay. It's not an option. That is, that money is held by the landlords essentially in trust. As a realtor, you know what that means. So yep. money doesn't belong to you, but you're holding on to it for somebody for safekeeping. And it is to give you safekeeping. If somebody... Uh, if one of your tenants, for instance, moves out right now and didn't give you any notice, then you're entitled to use the last month's rent um, against, against in lieu of notice, I guess. Um, but by, by no means can you, can, if somebody misses uh, any rent, can you apply the last month's rent? So do you foresee like, you know, take out your crystal ball there and, uh, you know, Project ahead three, four months, say, when, when all this is settled. Like, do you see any lawsuits or something coming as a result of this? Or, like, you know, what sort of in your position do you feel will be happening in, say, four months? Do you have an idea? I, I, I think I'm going to be very busy in four months. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't mean to jest about it because it's a very serious situation. But the, there will be a lot of legal action taken. Um, now, the, the way that the Residential Tenancies Act um, manifests itself for tenants, they have up to one year after they um, move out, per se, to file an action in, at the Landlord Tenant Board against wow. their landlord. 
a landlord has until the tenant closes the door and gets into their moving van. And after the tenant has vacated the premises or ended the tenancy, then the landlord cannot um, file an application against them, the landlord tenant board. They must in that situation, if there is money owed for uh, damages or for un unforeseen expenses, then they must, um, uh, they must um, uh, try and get a judgment in small claims court. Wow, so they have a year after they move out to come back to the landlord for damages, but the landlord, once you get the key or once they leave, you're scuppered. That doesn't seem quite fair. <laughs> the Residential Tenancies Act, um, as far as I can see, was put into play because there was a significant population of unscrupulous landlords. And I'm not mm -hmm. suggesting that every landlord is, is doing what they should do all the time. I see evidence of it regularly. But what it has created is very knowledge, uh, very knowledgeable population, a subpopulation of tenants who aren't interested in playing by the rules, aren't interested in uh, paying the rent on time. And, and it, it hurts all tenants because uh, a lot of times all tenants get painted with the same brush. And unfortunately, there are lots of people who just wanna pay the rent all the time, but they're having to, put, having to go through hoops in order to find a place to live because landlords rightfully so are scared of getting one of those tenants who is going to try and and get away with living for free well it's interesting i have a saying in real estate good tenants don't stay tenants long they become homeowners bad tenants <laughs> become tenants from you know where and and they do know how to play the system unfortunately and and uh you know sometimes that's not the best so no and uh, that, that is not that is not i want to make sure that that we're not that we're not besmirching tenants as a, as a group no, no, not at all. The vast majority of tenants pay their rent on time, live a peaceful existence, and are uh, hopefully working towards becoming homeowners or living out their, their time as a tenant. Either way is fine. I love the term quiet enjoyment. I want you to have quiet enjoyment. I don't want to hear from you. You know, that's, uh, that's the best for us. So, um, so in, in summary, Larry, what can you sort of tell us about from a landlord's perspective, a tenant's perspective, going forward what is the best thing and at the end of all that give yourself a little bit of a, 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 a promotion there for for your business itself well oh, okay um the the best thing the best way that a landlord and tenant can get through this is with communication um if you're a landlord don't be afraid to talk to your tenants about the situation and say are, are you okay if you're a tenant um talk to your landlord uh, say if you're having a problem with the rent, talk to your landlord to say, what can we do? Because I'm having trouble finding the rent. And if you're a landlord and you're watching this, direct your, your tenants to, if they're having a big problem, if they're a low income household and they're having a problem making ends meet during this, then have them call 211 to see what services are available. Have them access, if they've been laid off, the federal government's program for $2,000 a month for the next four months. Um, help them help themselves, so to speak. Wonderful. Um, so I really appreciate this. Like you've answered all of the questions and really helped us understand more what is going on and what to expect from a landlord's perspective, a tenant's perspective. And, and so even if you can afford to pay something, you should do that, correct? You absolutely should do that. But you, you should, if your ten if your landlord is expecting you to pay $1,500 and all you can give them is a thousand, you also owe them an explanation and you should open the lines of communication to say, look, I'm having trouble. Can we, can we do a thousand a month for the next three months? And I'll make up to 1500 over the following three months awesome. or something like that. Um, awesome. With regard, with regard to uh, plugging my business a little bit, um, I always like free publicity, but thanks. Well, thank you for that. My the name of my company is LJP legal services. Uh, the website is ljplegal.ca. And my telephone number is toll free one triple eight two four four three six nine seven. I focus primarily on um, small claims matters and more tenant matters. Well, Larry, I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope you're staying safe out there. Great information today, and we'll put all your information down below or up above, wherever it goes. I'm not 100% sure. We'll do all the links to it, and if anybody has any questions, Put them in the comment section down below and what we will do is we will respond to them as they come in and again guys be safe out there larry thank you very much for your time and enjoy your day guys 
Thanks, Larry. Michael, you, Michael, stay safe and healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great Thank day. You, sir. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye now.